I am Jennifer Sandoval Dance, the Associate Vice President for Admission and Financial Aid at Claremont McKenna College. All right, so at Claremont McKenna College, we have three rounds of admission for first year applicants. The first is Early Decision 1, and Early Decision is the binding type of admission, and it's ideally suited for students who know that Claremont McKenna College is their first choice, and that if they are offered admission, they will attend, and their college search process will suspend at that point. So definitely, you've gotta be all in to CMC to apply Early Decision. Claremont McKenna does not have early action. So the early decision one deadline is November 1. Applicants are notified by December 15th whether or not they received admission. We have two other rounds of admission, early decision two and regular decision. The deadline for both early decision two and regular decision is January 10th. The students who apply early decision two are notified by February 15th and our regular decision applicants will be notified by April 1. We have an important deadline in between both of those, and that's for any student interested in being considered for merit-based scholarships. Applicants interested in merit-based scholarships at CMC need to submit their application by December 1. So if you're applying early decision one, the good news is you're all considered for merit-based scholarships, but if you are gonna apply in a subsequent round, then you do need to apply by December 1 to be considered for merit-based scholarships. Need-based financial aid, so Claremont McKenna is need blind in our admission process for U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and DACA and undocumented students. We are need aware for international students. All students should apply for need-based aid if they feel that they need it. So we need applicants to file the free application for federal student aid and the college scholarship service form, otherwise known as a CSS profile, and it's available on the College Board's website. For early decision one, we need that those application forms submitted to financial aid by November 8th. For early decision two and regular decision, we need those forms submitted by January 17th. Okay, so we will meet 100% of our students' determined need through that process. In terms of what we require of the application process, so there's the actual application itself. Applicants can complete the common application, they can complete the coalition application, or QuestBridge, the QuestBridge application for applicants participating in that program. All the applications are pretty much asking the same information, just in different places and spaces. So please choose the application that best suits you and your application process. So we'll also ask for two recommendation letters, one from your high school co college counselor or guidance counselor, and one from a teacher, so you can pick you know, whatever teacher you think can best speak to your performance in the classroom. We'll need your high school transcript, so you'll want to make sure that that gets in. And we are test optional, so if you choose to submit scores, you can self-report them through your application, send them officially from the College Board or ACT, and we do super score if you do submit tests for consideration in the admission process. There's another step that we recommend, so not required, but recommended, and that's that our applicants either do an interview or submit a two-minute video, okay? so. We really like to get to know you in a more personal space and either the interview or the optional video allow you the opportunity to share more about yourself in a more personal way. Sure, so we many times get the question of what makes an application stand out? You know, applicants are submitting the same information, so what would distinguish them? And I would say that there are a couple of different factors that, that are key to the application process. So as we're going through, our goal is to learn about you, where you're at in your life, what you want out of college, how you see the college, specifically Claremont McKenna, how you see it really helping you to achieve your goals. So what the, the question the admission committee will pose is how will this applicant benefit from and contribute to Claremont McKenna College's mission to prepare young people for thoughtful and productive lives and to prepare them for responsible leadership in the areas of business, government, and the professions. And there's many other aspects to our mission, but really we're gonna keep coming back to that. So a great space for applicants to articulate how they believe that they will contribute to Claremont McKenna, what they're hoping to get out of this experience and to contribute to our community is in a question we ask applicants, why are you applying to Claremont McKenna? It's not a trick question. And what I, how I usually guide applicants in terms of how do I how do I begin to talk about that? You want to, it's not a thesis, so you do not need to worry about, you know, if there's 20 things you love about Clarence McKenna, making sure you cover every single one. I would say what's your number one reason, if you have a really clear, maybe the top three, break those down in, in to giving us a little more detail and make sure it's specific to Claremont McKenna. So a student, an example of somebody not making it 
a customize to CMC would be a student that says they want to attend a liberal arts college in California and they're interested in sciences and they believe this would, they want a residential community they believe this would be a great place well we are those things and we would provide those things those are not unusual those are things that students are going to find at many colleges so you know uh, speaking to some things about like okay so I'm really interested in viewpoint diversity so the Athenaeum speaker series really interests me I, I love the fact that Claremont McKenna you know is a place where I'm going to get to be part of a premier government program so knowledge of that and where I'm going to get to work with the research institutes and centers and it's okay if you if there are some of these things that you're still learning about it's completely okay we know that called the college process is a journey but we hope that if you're submitting an application to Claremont McKenna you're able to easily answer that question so I would say that is an opportunity for you to be really clear with the admission committee about that we are we want to know about what you've been involved in so in your extracurricular activities you can upload a resume anything that you think it should be covered it, the application does indicate the common app and I believe the coalition will indicate please list your activities on the application in order of priority so remember that what what are the most important activities and make sure you're listing them accordingly in, in that sequential order so we do get a sense of where you're spending most of your time and I would say you know jobs count if you have to take it if you're shuttling siblings around you have other responsibilities definitely make sure you include those things so anything that you're doing when you're not in the classroom and not sleeping just feel free to make sure that's organized that you put that in there so the other aspects would be the things i talked about the resume not the resume the optional video and the interview so as we're going through we're looking to see you know how have you been a leader uh, how are you a problem solver you know are you really working on helping you are you a role model so if you're editor of the newspaper how are you making sure that when you graduate, you've left behind a team that will be successful? You know, do you really care about bringing people together? You care about your community more you know, than not just your individual accomplishments. So we'll be looking at this through your activities. You can flesh out more about this in opportunities like when you talk about why you're applying to CMC. You can share more about this in your interviews. Your recommenders will likely speak a bit to this as well. So yeah, those are, those are ways to, I would say, stand out. Remember what to who CMC is, so that the leadership aspect, we do have a focus on preparing students for leadership in business, government, and professions, free exchange of ideas, civil discourse, known as Open Academy is important to us, and we have these great research institutes and centers. Sometimes students are, are interested in being in one of our Division Three program, our Division Three athletic program, so we just want to know that you've understand and done your research about us and that we're not left after looking at your application and reading it and going, why did, is this student applying to Claremont McKenna? <laughs> Trying to get an understanding of that. So also we have wonderful study abroad and domestic programs, a semester in Washington, DC, Silicon Valley, those kinds of things, if those interest you, those are great things to tease out as well. So you do not want to leave the admission committee wondering why you're applying. So make sure that those things, you, and again, in that why, you, why CMC, you can be very direct. So we are frequently asked, what is test optional and does it really mean optional or is it recommended? And with test optional, that word optional is intentional, right? I promise you if Claremont McKenna recommended you submit test scores, we would state that and, and be blunt about that. So the test optional policy gives students the option, you're in the driver's seat to decide when you think about your academic experience and portfolio, and what the admission office is going to see in making a decision about your academic ability to be successful at CMC and you think your SAT or ACT scores are an important part of that story and they supplement your grades and your curriculum and all the great things you've done academically, then submit them. If you think that maybe they're, maybe test taking is something that is, is not going to be your strong suit and you're looking at test scores going, uh, they don't necessarily help, then that's a good reason not to submit them. Okay, so you're in the driver's seat. Please do not feel that we're gonna sit and question whether or not you have scores or don't have scores. Does just that never comes up. We get questions about, are there any do's or don'ts or recommendations for the supplemental video, the two minute video? And what I would say is, do make sure that we hear your voice in the video. Now, some students, will, they'll never actually show themselves, which is fine. They might be showing us scenery in their area or they might have a PowerPoint they're showing us. 
or you know walking us through a space and that's fine we can hear their voice that's really what the goal is we want to hear in the students own words their response to one of the props and we want to see their excitement as they're talking about it and as they're thinking through this and what points they're trying to make so in telling you what we're trying to do, get from the video what would not and what is not helpful when we get the video is when students are showing us a recital performance or they're showing us you know a dance performance where they it's interesting to see that but we're actually not hearing from their own voice another thing would be be cautious of the background you're in it, what I mean by that is noise there have been a few videos we've received where students are either in a coffee shop or outside and we cannot hear them because there's so much background noise so your voice is important so anything that's going to mitigate that you know you the, the thing to keep in mind too is it's meant to be chill. Most students are doing it in their bedroom, in a classroom, at their, their dining room table, just looking at the camera and responding. So no pressure. If you're gifted in videography and you want to, to actually put a lot of time and effort into it, that's great. But really it should not take you, for most students, it shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. Okay, so interviewing as part of the admission process. So there are going to be two different types of interviews for two, two different types of applicants. Let me start with just all, all applicants, all first year applicants or transfer applicants for that matter. So Claremont McKenna does offer virtual interviews and so there are two ways that you can engage with those. One would be for a student to go to CMC's admission website and sign up for a virtual interview. We're offering them through mid-December, so plenty of time to get them done. I will tell you though, you want to get the interview done in advance of the deadline that you're applying to. So early decision one folks want to get that done by, or by November 1 or very close to that deadline. Another way to schedule an interview, a virtual interview, would be with one of our alumni. So also on the admission website, you'll see a space for alumni interviewers and we have them all over the country and world. Ideally, you're connecting with somebody in your area, in your, in your region, so you can also contact the alum directly and set that up. Start with the word community because it's really important that every student who we enroll at CMC understands that their experience, their education here is definitely going to be important to them as individuals, but it's also really important that they are contributing to building a sense of community. They care about their peers, they're there to help and support them, and they're gonna get that help and support back. So that is something really important. We also wanna build a community that is all in alignment and everybody here who comes to Claremont McKenna understands the community and the mission and that they subscribe to the fact that they aspire to be a responsible leader in, in a pre-professional area in business government, the professions, right? So we wanna make sure that students do are, that's something that, that is important to them and they're gonna celebrate that and push themselves in that area and space and they'll have peers who do that and a community here to support them in that venture. We also want students who are open-minded and that who are, who like research and the, studying the empirics and really getting to the, to the root, the root of understanding different topics and, and areas in our world around us and that they want to engage across differences and that they're comfortable with being uncomfortable. They're comfortable with you know understanding that sometimes things are going to be controversial and we're going to work through that and that 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 space is something that is important to them and that's something that they really place a very high premium on. So we want to make sure that we want intellectually curious students, students who like learning about the world around them, students who value interpersonal relationships. They, you know, so this kind of gets back to community, but they really, really uh, find that the friendships they're forming, the relationships they're forming, the people, the great way that they learn about themselves and the world is through the engagement with the community around them. So we definitely want students to, to to really think that that's an important part of the process as well. So young people who are curious, young people who are open-minded, young people who want to solve problems, and young people who are collaborative and definitely value their own individual accomplishments as in, in tandem with the accomplishments of the community. And we want students that hail from all over the world and country. The, there are about 330 students in a first year class, so we want to bring 
a variety of life experiences into that class and the community so they're able to speak to what is it like to be raised in an agricultural community and home and be on a farm and for students to talk about what it's like to have moved around you know four or five times maybe their parents are in the military right so we want students to come and be able to have had their life experience and be able to share that to enrich our community and then have theirs enriched by rich diversity we have here as well. The college application essay invokes anxiety in applicants because, well maybe this whole process does, I acknowledge that, but the essay is open-ended and I understand that that leaves, unlike other things where you're, you know, you've done your grades, you're asking your accreditation letters, this you will ultimately have to determine when you're done with it and what you cover and there's a lot of freedom in it but in that freedom sometimes that can leave you overwhelmed with how do I go about approaching this. So I would say that the do's and don'ts of the essay do make sure that you are talking about something and addressing one of the broad prompts, they're intentionally prompt, that you really care about and that you also feel is going to introduce us to an aspect of yourself that may not be fleshed out in the rest of your application. So if you have been involved in one activity, maybe that's an athletic activity, theater, it's okay to it's okay to speak about that, but we're trying to learn something about you that is about your personality, about how you're growing, becoming who you are. So I would say that that is key. This is about you and you'll get lots of helpful recommendations, but don't let anyone edit you out of your essay. Don't, you know, there are a lot of topics out there that are trite. So the, you know, winning the national championship if you're an athlete or, or losing the national championship or the big game. There are topics about going on a service trip and the awareness that comes with being in a place that's very different and, and seeing how, you know, what the values of a different community and the challenges and the struggles. And so if, I'm not saying absolutely not to use those because if those are a really formative part of your story, then that should be told. But just know that that is so frequently, it's such a common thing. So please, if you're thinking about topics and there's seven of them and that's one of them, that's probably one to eliminate. Only if it's the only one you think that's gonna cover what you wanna cover. The other topic would, or the other thing to avoid would be if you're speaking about a role model and somebody you admire, Make sure that you are speaking about, you are internalizing this and what are we learning about you because of this person you admire. Because if it's a biography of the person you admire, we will in fact want to admit the person that you admire. So that, and that's, that's a tough line. You know, we understand you have special connections with people and that's extraordinary. And, but really we are seeking to learn about you through your own voice and writing. So that, those are my helpful tips on the college essay. Okay, so I understand that many want to understand, you know, you're going through all this effort to submit an application and how is it used? How are, how is it read? How do admission officers make decisions? So we, the great thing about the admission process at Claremont McKenna is we have a team reading process. So if you're from Arizona, I'm your territory manager. I would get all the Arizona applicants and then I would pair, be paired up with an extraordinary colleague here in the admission office and we would read the application together. So I would be responsible for the academic components. That's your high school transcript. If you do submit test scores, that is included in there. We look at your school profile, which gives us context for your school and recommendation letters as well from your teacher and, and your counselor. And then my partner, my colleague, will be looking over your actual application, so reading your essays, seeing your extracurricular activities. They'll look at the interview and the video if you submit that, and also do a review of the recommendation letters as well. We both give an assessment of our areas and we talk through how we think the applicant would, again, taking back to the question of how will they benefit from and contribute to CMC. So we ask, you know, this student comes from this part of the country and this is the kinds of things that they've done and keep in mind the student has moved if they've moved around, you know, so all those kinds of factors that are important to understand about a student and then the kinds of things they've been involved in and why are they, what, what do we see as 
what do we see as the connection to CMC and how do we see them being a formative part of our community and, and being a leader both on campus and beyond. So that's essentially how it is done. So we do read everything that you submit, we discuss it, we feel privileged that you're sharing your life with us and we make a decision based off that. The admission committee will then all get together and we will review the applic each application and talk about it and ask any questions we have and then we'll, we'll make a vote on it and just keep going until we have a class. So demonstrated interest. If you do not know what demonstrated interest is, it is the concept of a college or university factoring in or looking at how you've engaged with the college or community. So it might be a campus visit, it might be attending a Zoom session, doing an interview if you visit your high school. Basically they're, they're looking at those things and that may be a consideration in their process. So at Claremont McKenna, we do not factor in demonstrated interest. We do not factor in demonstrated interest. So you do not need to worry about you know, I didn't do enough, I didn't, I had a test the day the admission officer was visiting, visiting my school. Please do not worry about that. Um, that being said, we do hope that you are engaging with the community in some way to learn about us. I think you want to go beyond what's on the website with brochures and we hope that you're engaging with somebody and it may be a friend that goes here from your school, that's great. Um, and that's not a formal engagement obviously, but we just want to make sure that you are, you, you're, getting, you're feeling like you're hearing from members of the community directly, but we will not track it. So interviews, interviews at Claremont McKenna, interviews in the admission process at Claremont McKenna are, they are optional, so they are not required. However, they are recommended, okay? So recommended interviews, so all applications are reviewed. We admit and enroll students who do not interview, okay? So I wanna put that out there. So what would it mean if you choose not to interview or you're not able to get an interview? Because that could happen too. Maybe there's, there are no more available when you actually go to sign up. Please do not panic. Interviews are, what I tell students is they're helpful because again, we're trying to learn as much from you in your own words. So an interview is a great way to do that. And however, again, if you do not interview, it's, it's, it's okay, you know, because we also understand that we do not have the human resources to interview every person. So that is okay. And um, as, if students are trying to figure out should I interview? So advice I give them is if you are really nervous about the process and you're worried that it's, you're just so worried that it's, it's you know, causing undue anxiety, then do not do it. Uh, the nice thing about the interview is you sit down with the CMC representative, you are able to, you're, you're asked questions, so you may address things that you didn't think to address in your application and you have an opportunity to ask questions as well. Okay, so it's, it's nice in that format. And also remember that you can do the optional video. So if you did want to interview and you weren't able to, or maybe you just want to do the video because that works better for you. You like the opportunity to record it again, or you like being able to know the question in advance or respond, then that's what I would, would recommend. But everybody's, like I said, everybody's reviewed. We, it's helpful. There are times we review applications and we'll say, oh, we wish they had a video or interview, but many of those students do get in as well. So please do not panic about that. So early decision one, early decision two, what is the difference outside of the deadline? Because they do have different deadlines. Early decision one is November one, early decision two is January 10th. So they are the same process. They are both, they both have a binding admission process. They're both for students who, who have determined that CMC is their first choice. So really there isn't any, any difference. I would say that the students who apply early decision two in many instances at Claremont McKenna, they, maybe they want us to see their fall grades. You know, maybe they had a rough semester or they just really want us to see that full fall production their senior year. So that can be a reason why a student applies early decision to, maybe they want to talk with our financial aid office some more to confirm affordability. So in general, our early decision two applicants, it's something else that they're learning about CMC, maybe they want to visit campus and they're not doing that till December. So it, that tends to be who we find in early decision two. But again, for you, as an, for you as an applicant, the two rounds are the same. They're going to act the same. We're going to be looking for the same things. So you should feel comfortable picking the one you feel more comfortable with, depending on the questions you have and when those are answered. 
So you're going to submit a lot of information as part of the application process and you're going to wonder what's most important. Did I not get in because of that B minus and AP Calc or I, when I meet students who did not get in, they many times, they, they pin it down to this one thing and it is almost never one thing. And honestly, we have so many talented applicants, we just cannot admit them all. So it, even if the decision is not admit, it has l in most cases very little to do with any deficiency in the application. So I definitely want to start with that. As we're going through the application, you know, I would say that it's the, the academics are an important starter. So we need to be convinced a student can be academically successful here. So we're looking at the curriculum, we're looking at grades, we're looking at your writing, your essay and recommendation letters. So I use that as that's that's an important prerequisite, right? If a student has an academic record that is not strong, then it doesn't matter what their personal credentials are and how extraordinary they are in leadership, that's gonna probably keep them out of the rest of the conversation. So strong academic record, critical, keeps you in the race, but actually in and of itself does not push you over the finish line into the admission process. What will ultimately push you over the finish line and will, what will ultimately make you stand out will be the areas of leadership, your leadership, your how you're able to both in what you've achieved and who you are becoming, how you're able to articulate that that aligns with Claremont McKenna's mission to prepare young people for thoughtful and productive lives and to prepare them for responsible leadership and business government and the professions and areas of viewpoint diversity. And so really kind of filling out the liberal arts and sciences we have here. So filling all that out. And so we will be looking much more to who you personally, your personal accomplishments, who you, who you are again, who you are becoming, and how Claremont McKenna is going to going to factor that in. So they're all important, but one is an important prerequisite uh, in order for us to really be able to evaluate the personal site. Thank you so much. We appreciate your interest in Claremont McKenna College, and we are privileged and excited to be a part of your journey. If you have any questions about anything we talked about here, or maybe other topics we weren't able to get to about Claremont McKenna, you are welcome to contact me. So again, Jennifer Sandoval Dance. My email is jsandoval at cmc.edu, and this information will be in the notes. You can also contact, we have 11 admission officers at Claremont McKenna that are all happy to help you. So if you go to the CMC admission website. There's a link that says meet the team. Click on that. You'll find who your area representative is and their contact information. Please do not hesitate to reach out. We are all about people and interpersonal connections and we do not want you, we want to make sure all your questions are answered and that you feel well prepared for this application process.